I am a confirmed lifelong points guy. This is the way it is. And on this channel in the past, we've done a lot of videos comparing different systems and showing why. Like for instance, we showed a dyno test that was done by Carcraft Magazine back in the middle of 1980s, late 1980s. There was a shootout between a stock General Motors single point distributor, an HEI, and an aftermarket HEI setup. And the stock single point distributor made more horsepower at a higher RPM than either of the HEIs. I didn't make it up, we showed you the actual dyno results. We also did an example where we set up an electronic ignition and a points ignition to the same coil, spun them up, and as it turned out, they both threw the same exact length spark, but at higher RPM, the spark generated by the points was actually smoother and cleaner than the one generated by the electronic ignition. Why is this? I'm not an electronics engineer. It has something to do with slew rates and whatnot. If you're that curious, Google it, find out for yourself. All I know is they work. Downside to points, downside to points is that they take some maintenance. You know, and generally it's every time you change the oil, you check the points, you clean them, you gap them, you lube them, you put it back together again. People complain about maintenance with point systems, and I say to myself, if you're messing around with a classic car, why would you have a problem with, with doing this stuff with the points? You're, you're in the wrong hobby. If that's too much to deal with, you're, you're in the wrong hobby, right? The upside to them, aside from the sheer mechanical simplicity, is the lack of any sort of troubleshooting voodoo. It's all so simple, right? Your car doesn't start. Are you getting a spark at the spark plug? Yes, well then it's not the ignition system. Are you not getting a spark? Okay. Are you getting 12 volts to the coil? Something near 12 volts to the coil. Anywhere between like 7 and 14 volts and it's going to throw a spark. No. Problem someplace else. It's not ignition. Yes. Check the points. Clean and gap the points. Are you getting a spark? You know, see, it's that simple. And, and worse, and it, the, the last step is the condenser. A condenser is no good, right? It's that simple. There's no no equipment. No, there's no there's no voodoo. You can troubleshoot any point style ignition system, regardless of what's wrong with it, in under two or three. Once you know what's, once you understand them, two or three minutes. No tools. No diagnostic equipment. No nothing. Just pop, 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 and that's it. It's done. This is why I love this stuff. And there's recently, like on Power Tree, I kept seeing people having problems with both ignition systems and fuel systems. But the ignition systems, they, you know, it just takes a dump. You've got a full tilt modern electronic ignition system on there. They just go. We showed that one with, uh, with Kiwi, with a Petronics unit. We're a brand new Petronics unit out of the box. And then, right? That's the way they go. You don't get that with points. At least points kind of give you a warning. It'll start to run a little jacked up before it actually stops entirely. So you get a heads up. And again, you can carry all of your spare parts literally in your pocket if you have to. You know, points and condenser. You're good to go. But the reason I, I wanted to do this video today is because last week we did the one on the mechanical tack that we're putting in Bottle Rocket. And I said that we're going to set up a mechanical tack drive distributor for it. And that one of the reasons I use dual point on that is because I, for, for regular non-nitrous runs, it's supposed to run with, on the one set of points. So what I do is I take, and I'm, I'm going to get into the, the nuts of this in a minute, I'll take a distributor like this one, and instead of running it as a true dual point distributor, I'll run one set of points advanced and one set of points retarded. And I explained that that was a, a trick that Bill Jenkins had come up with back in the 70s during the pro-stock era. And actually, this is exactly the distributor, the type of distributor that would have been run in something like Pro Stock or Modified all through the 70s. And I'll explain the difference here. So, before I get into modifying them, let's talk about why, why single, dual, and all right. For a typical daily driver, for, or just cruiser, your Sunday afternoon car, a standard single point distributor with a good set of points, a decent set of points, is good to about 5,500 RPM. You could take the cheapest, most jacked up Chinese points with the, with the bad rubbing blocks and everything else, stick them in your engine, and as long as they're fresh, they're gapped and looped correctly, you know, the, the, rubbing, the rubbing block is looped and the points are gapped correctly, it'll go 5,500 RPM. 
and it'll never skip a beat. Over 5,500 RPM, the spring that they put in these points isn't strong enough to, to close them at the higher RPM. And so that's where you get your RPM limit with stock points. The dual point distributors, the factory used these on any application that was intended to make power above 5,500 RPM. So let's say on a, a, any, of the, any, really, any of the performance engines from that day that would be intended to run to the 6,000, 6,500, even 7,000 RPM range, they went to the dual point. This is a Presto Light dual point. This is, a, this is a 340, this is out of a 340. It's essentially the same distributor Chrysler used in the 340s, 426 Hemis, 446 packs, some of the 3 to 3 4 speed applications, anything where you had a, a, an intended usage above 5,000, 5,500 RPM got one of these distributors. They have a slightly stiffer, a slightly stiffer spring than these, but not crazy. And the reason, like I said, why they use a lighter spring is because they intend to go eight or 10,000 miles without having to regap them and everything. So they use a light spring to keep less tension on the rubbing block. Now this is a distributor that I've used in the past, and this is one that I split up. Again, so that we're only running a one set of points at a time. And we know that these points are good to, this, this style, with this style of points, regardless of it's single or dual point, the spring load on this set of points is good to around 6,000, 6,500 RPM. So what we did here is we split them up. So here's the original condenser, and originally both of these points were run off this one condenser. But because we split them up, here's the condenser and the set of points, and here's the wire that goes to that set of points. And then here, for this set of points, we mounted an external condenser, and it has a whole separate thing. So this way now, we can leave on the advanced set of points, we set our total timing for let's say 34 degrees. There's a six degree difference between this set of points and this set of points. So we leave off the line, off the starting line, we're on the, the, the advanced set of points, 34 degrees, and then once we're in high gear and we want to retard the timing, now we switch over using a switch, just a regular manual switch mounted in, inside the car, from the one set of points to the other. So now the coil is going to get a signal from the retarded set of points, and instead of 34 degrees, you've got 28 degrees. That's how that works. And this, this is foolproof. You can't, you know. Now again, it's not nearly as efficient as a modern, a, a modern computer-controlled ignition system, which can give you 60 degrees as, as, as you're opening the throttle and I'm back it off to 22 degrees and then swing it back up to 38 degrees all in the blink of an eye before you can even, before, it's all being done, it's, it's, it's a constant sweep. This is no match for that when you're talking about ultimate power. But when you're talking about the world that we exist in, no, this actually works pretty okay. This will get you down the road, and, and it'll get you down the road within just a, a couple of horsepower of the most sophisticated ignition system there is. The main difference, cost, it costs you a lot of money. A good modern ignition system costs some money. Complication. It's not something you can just troubleshoot and diagnose as you're driving down the road or pull over on the side of the road and say, oh, the points are dirty. Let me clean them up. Let me regap them. And then, boom, you're back on the road. I know, the matchbook cover, right? Who even has matchbooks anymore? But you can't do that with the modern ignition system. So it's a trade-off. And then, again, as we showed with, with things like the Petronix, which is just a replacement for the... They just drop dead, no warning, no nothing. You're driving around down the road, nothing. Or you shut the car off and go to restart it, nothing. They're dead in the water. So, main reasons you want to do this. Now, this here is, okay, at the end of the point ignition era, which was actually the early 1980s, none of the manufacturers all switched over to electronic ignition in the early 1970s, but they hung around in race cars for the longest time because electronic ignitions didn't have the capability to go to 9, 10, 11, 12,000 RPM. Points do. So what we have here is a distributor. We talk about the, the Jenkins trick about the switch, which we just showed here. What we have here is a state-of-the-art, this is a full competition distributor, the kind of would have been found in Pro Stock in the 1970s or Comp Eliminator, 1970s to early 1980s. And these are designed to run 
Where these things run out of steam at about seven grand, that's where these things pick up. The main difference between this factory style dual point distributor and this full race dual point distributor is, let me take this off, and here's a, here's a trivia thing. These distributors take the same cap and rotor as these distributors. And this is actually a Jeep Willys design from the 1950s. But that's besides the point. The difference between this and this is that these distributors have this plate right here. It's a, it's a tight fit. Okay. So this plate is a, has a bearing in it. And the bearing secures the top part of the shaft. So these, while well, these distributors only have a bushing holding them together, these distributors here have a bottom roller bearing and a top roller bearing, and it holds the shaft exactly perfect through the RPM range. What'll happen is, once you get over that 6,000 to 7,000 RPM range, any play, any slop that's in the shaft starts to magnify itself, and you'll get spark scatter. So you'll end up with a high RPM miss at the worst, or just a high RPM loss of power by putting a bearing, a roller bearing at, e at either end of the shaft, the shaft is held exactly true no matter what RPM you spin it to. And in this case, I guess it's about, these, these were rated, I believe, to 11 or 12,000 RPM. The pro stock cars of the day were running about 9,500 or so through the traps. Modified eliminator cars were running 11,000. They were actually leaving the start line at like 11,000. And this is the kind of distributor they used. Points. Now, here's, here's more trivia. When I got out of nitro racing in 1998, we were still using points. We were using 5 amp mags, Super Mag 5, and sitting on top of the Super Mag 5 was a giant set of points. And why was this? Because at that point in the late 1980s, there was no more reliable way to trigger the spark on a top fuel car because of all of the violence involved in it, because of vibration and, and all of the thing. The most reliable way to trigger the, the spark, an 8,000 RPM spark on a blown nitro motor of the era was through a set of points. So that's another reason why I've, I've stuck with myself. Well, you know, if it's good enough for the top filler, you know, we were making 6,000 horsepower back in the day. If it's good enough to make 6,000 horsepower, it's good enough to motor my car down the road. The stock type of points that they used in these distributors use a relatively light spring, and that's because of wear. So this was supposed to go out on the road, and it was supposed to go 10 or 12,000 miles before you had to get in there and clean and gap the points or change the points. And so they use a relatively light spring. And that spring tension is, is what limits the RPM use of these things. This is a full race set of points. And if you want to see the difference, so here, well, like, let's see. So you can hear this, this set of points. And you really can't let this, let this car go. You can barely hear it, okay? Now this is a higher set of higher a set of higher performance points, factory points. Listen. Okay, you can hear that, right? This is what a full race set of points sounds like. <laughs> that's that's serious RPM potential right there. I mean, again, this type of points isn't supposed to go 10,000 miles. This is supposed to go four or five passes, and then you check everything. One other interesting thing about these distributors, because they use these breaker, these uh, top bearings on the shaft, you can't get in there with a normal feeler gauge and, and set the points the way you would on one of these. So instead, they use a GM style, uh, like a Uniset type of points that you set to dwell. You don't worry about what the gap is. You set them by dwell, and you put there's a little window on each side and you put your allen key in there and with the dwell meter you spin the motor and turn the key until you get the right dwell and when you set them up like this one here and this is this is the one that was in bottle rocket you see here we have a ma an external mounted condenser that goes to this set of points and then we have the original condenser that goes to this set of points and then these wires here lead to a switch 
that's on the dashboard. So you leave with, with full advance and then you can retard it. If you're going to spray it, you retard it. Or if you're just getting up in the, towards the finish line, you retard it and you pick up power up there. So in a nutshell, that's how, that's how it all works. There's, there's your progression of, you know, just regular classic car, daily driver, street and strip, muscle car performance, and like all out. Just let her rip. And one other thing too, what Jenkins did, there's an eight degree difference. On this distributor, there's a six degree difference between these points, right? So in other words, like if you've got it set on the lead set of points and you switch over to the, to the trailing set of points, there's a six degree difference. On this distributor, there's an eight degree difference. Jenkins wanted four degrees. And so what they did there is you see the, you see the screws, I can't, you see the screws that hold the points to the plate, to the breaker plate, what he did was he filed the mounting plate, the mounting bracket for the points to move the one set a little bit closer to the other. So that's how you can actually tailor the amount of, the amount of lead. Hard to do on a distributor like this one here because the points mount on a post, but because this style of points uses two screws, you can take the, the bottom plate of the points and file them to position them wherever you want in relation to the other, and then you can fine tailor the amount of advance and retard. I love these things. They're just so simple. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.